This week on The Race Report, we'll hear from rising IMCA Modified star Patty Simpson and Thunder Mountain stars Jason Beebe and Brian White, plus great racing action from I-88, Shangri-La 2, and Thunder Mountain Speedways, all straight ahead on this edition of The Race Report. Hi everyone and welcome to this edition of the Race Report. I'm Ron Hills. We begin this week at I-88 Speedway in Afton. First up were the Street Stocks and Nick Robinson battled Buck Mills to the finish. Leon Andrus calls the action. Mills, your leader. Robinson now with a good run down the back stretch. Down into turn number three. Parallel sticks are going to fly. Two laps to go. Buck Mills. Here comes Nick Robinson now on the top side. Say, how do you do? How do you do as he takes it down into turn number one? Buck Mills slides up. Gives him a little bit of a bump. Tries to get him out of the groove. Robinson not going to put up with it. Stays up on the top side. Puts a nose in front. Out of turn four they come. Robinson now with a lead with one lap to go. Buck Mills down on the inside as Robinson takes it down into turn number one as your leader Mills right there second down the back stretch the Olam Street Stock feature down into turn number three the win gonna go to score standby gonna go to Nick and Knight Nick Robinson Buck Mills Kurt Decker the 01A of Cronk Neil Palladino and Paul Arrington there you go Jeff Leslie led wire to wire to score his first I-88 Speedway Sportsman win, despite pressure from Charlie Hendrickson Jr. And Hendrickson now is closed in on the 62 of Leslie, and here comes Rodney Hart. Your top three cars right tight together. Any kind of miscue, we're going to have another exciting finish here. 22 and three to go, Hendrickson. Might have backed off just a little bit to save a little bit of those tires for the last few laps as now he's putting heavy pressure on Leslie. Leslie, your leader. Here comes Hendrickson. He's up on the top side. Looks like he might set up a slingshot. Down to the inside. He's putting heavy pressure. Wow, great racing here tonight in the sportsman division. Again, Charlie Hendrickson Jr. taking it to the top side. Two laps to go as they work it down the back stretch. Hendrickson trying to wheel it up on the top side. White flag coming out this time. Hendrickson got it well on the top side. Leslie, right there on his inside down in the turn number one. We're going to have another last lap pass here maybe. But Leslie going to swing up in front of Hendrickson. Hendrickson lost a little bit of momentum. Out of the turn, it's going to be Jeff Leslie hanging on for the win. Hendrickson right there second. Rodney Hart third. Denny Decker fourth, Klinger is fifth. Wow, another exciting finish here at the I-88 Speedway. Arnie Slade had to get by Jim Gabriel Jr. and Greg Tadich to capture his first ever I-88 Speedway modified win in one of the strangest finishes I've ever seen. Back to Leon Andrus. Rich Ricky Jr., something going wrong with the 406 and Arnie Slade hustling under Jim Gabriel Jr. to take second spot away. As Greg Tadich out front. Arnie Slade right there second. Gotta believe a caution gonna be made here shortly. But Arnie Slade now, your new leader out front in the 22B. He's right on the back bumper now of Steve Anderson. He got one, oh mama! The Greg Tadich 19T with a right rear flat, a great run for Tadich. Gonna come to an end, he had a second place run going. White flag out as Tadich gonna try to milk it into the pit area. It's all Arnie Slade down the back stretch. Tadich coming to a stop up there. Gonna be a... Oh, Arnie Slade getting across the line as he gets the win, but oh, no, no, hang on 
right there, babies. Oh, my. As Arnie Slade comes across, gets hooked up on the front end of Steve Anderson, barely comes across the line. Then, then it's the 89 of Jason Andrews. Not seeing them down there and hits them both right in the caboose. Patty Simpson began her racing career behind the wheel of a Tobias slingshot. And now she's a serious contender to win an IMCA modified competition. Steve Clapperton has the story. This is Steve Clapperton at I-88 Speedway. I'm talking to Patty Simpson, the driver of the IMCA modified number 04. Well, Patty, how's your season going for you so far this year? It's been pretty good this year. We're doing a lot better than we have in the past year. Things are really coming together for us. It seems to be. I know you've been running right up close to the front and point standings all year long. Yep, yep. This has been our best year so far. Now you're a two-a-night racer. Is that what's going so far? Uh, nope. This year we've just been running here at I-88, making a couple shows down a five-mile point. Okay, now how did you get started in racing? Uh, my parents always watched NASCAR, and I always said I wanted to do it, and finally they let me do it. They wanted me to start in a go-kart, and I wasn't fast enough for me. <laughs> so what did you start in? Uh, Tobias Slingshots. They're a small uh, Briggs and Shrad motor car. And you did pretty well in the, in the slingshots? Yep, yep. Actually missed the class, but these are a little faster and they run a lot closer to home. All right, and so did, did you move up to the IMCA Modified right directly from the slingshot? Oh, uh, we took a few years off and then we went we went into the Modified, the IMCA. How's it been racing with the with the guys in the IMCA Modified division? It's It's been good. Uh, we run with a lot of great guys and uh, actually last couple weeks ago here, Mike Wilmot did an interview with you and he kept saying how great it was racing with the guys, so I went over and mentioned to him that it's not just guys out there and he, he gave me a big apology and said next time he gets a chance he'll make sure my name's mentioned so we're waiting on that one. <laughs> Who are your sponsors and people that help you out with your car? Uh, my biggest sponsor would be my dad. He has uh, Tim Simpson Construction, Tom Brick Home Improvements, uh, Sebers Tavern is another big sponsor we have. Crew members? Um, Kevin, uh, my brother-in-law Eric, and my dad Tim. Okay one of the questions that we always ask is how did you get your number? Uh, it's the year I graduated. That <laughs> makes sense. <laughs> we, we had a whole list of them, and that's that's the one we finally chose. That's the one you came up with. Now, was that your number when you were in a slingshot? No, we were the 22, and somebody had that when we started in the IMCA. So, so you had to switch. We had to switch. <laughs> All right. From I-88 Speedway, Steve Clapperton. Friday night, Simpson raced to a solid fourth-place finish, and the win went to Mike Smith. So 18 laps in, seven to go, or next caution, they tell me. The 12 of Weaver is down a lap. And... Chucker flag coming out. That it was seven or the next caution. And Gary Smith getting the win. Victory Lane will be held. The four soldiers will be coming out. We do have a curfew here. And in four-cylinder action, David Smith overcame a crash in qualifying to score yet another feature win. At Pencan Speedway, Alan Rudolavage inherited the lead from Mike Colston when Colston had a flat tire to score the modified win. Other drivers in Victory Lane were Tracy Gregory, Mike Nagel Jr., Rich Talada, Rob Warner, and Andy Brigham. When we return, a look at Saturday racing action. More straight ahead on this edition of The Race Report. DeVivo's Discount Auto Sales is celebrating 37 years in business and that means great deals for you on a quality pre-owned car, truck, van, or SUV. Over 60 domestic and foreign vehicles in stock to choose from with new arrivals weekly. So, for a vehicle that will fit your needs and your wallet, stop on by and see Sunny at DeVivo's Discount Auto Sales, 1126 Upper Front Street in Binghamton, just off Route 81, serving the southern tier for 37 years. Unicorn Electronics in the Valley Plaza, Johnson City has the best pricing and selection of audio, video, and computer cables in the area. 
Don't spend a fortune on that HDMI cable for your new HDTV or Blu-ray player. Unicorn Electronics has quality cables in the lengths you need at a price you can afford. Expanding your network, Unicorn has the patch cables and accessories to make it happen. When you need to connect, think Unicorn Electronics in the Valley Plaza, Johnson City. I'll take the alert. I'll take the alert. Pick me! Pick me! We don't badmouth the competition. Huh? We just beat them in price, quality, and customer hey. service. Hi, this is Craig Moss with KRM Foundation Repair. Have you got water in the basements, cracked or flaking foundations, foundation walls that are falling in? Call us for a free estimate today. We're KRM Foundation Repair. Good as any, better than some. Bye bye. Welcome back to the race report to Thunder Mountain Speedway on Saturday night where Larry Hillis had his hands full holding off Eddie White and Jim LaRock to score his first sportsman win of the season. Jim Chase calls the action. Hillis continuing to protect the low side of the speedway. Fast Eddie White right off too, got a good run and Hillis will run a little bit high and uh, Eddie White will try to force his way in there but he can't get the job done. Five laps to go. White now takes a peek upside and that opens the door for Jimmy LaRock. They touch off turn two, LaRock will take the number two spot away from White down the back straightaway. Everybody in line behind the 31 of Hillis. Eddie White now back on the inside as they touch and White will take the number two spot. And the Rock will cross over off of two and he'll try to challenge back down into turn three for the number two spot. Back and forth they go. Side by side for the number two spot. Call it even at the stripe. And Hillis has got to be loving this as he's starting to open up a three car advantage over the Rock and White. Parallel sticks now coming up into the air. And the battle is still on, giving the advantage to White this time. The Rock, Brian White, and Brian Payne rounding out the top five in that order. As the white flag comes up into the air, being displayed one more time around. Who's it gonna be? Everybody sitting on the edge of their seats. Will it be Larry Hillis looking to claim his first feature win? Here comes Fast Eddie White with a last minute challenge. Not gonna be able to do it. Give the win to Larry Hillis. Eddie White, Jimmy LaRock, Brian, Brian White, and Brian Payne rounding out your top five. Matt Sissenstein added to his win list in the Pure Stock feature. The Road Bandit win went to Art Palmer, Jason Beebe is still looking for his first trip to Victory Lane this season, but consistent finishes have earned him second in the Hurricane Street Stock point standings. Jim Chase has more. Well, here we are at the Thunder Mountain Speedway, 4th of July weekend, fireworks on hand, and I'm speaking with Jason Beebe, Hurricane Street Stock driver, currently in the uh, number two points position, and uh, tell us a little bit about your season, Jason. No, so far we've had a good year. It's only my second year in the street stock, so so far we've had a good year. It's had a little bad luck, but so far I'm doing so good. Well, last year you were named Rookie of the Year here at Thunder Mountain Speedway. You came close to a couple of feature wins last year and just missed it in the closing laps, and you've been there knocking on the door. And a lot of your competitors are uh, making note of Jason Beebe, and uh, on several occasions you've been the noted man to have the fastest car out there. <laughs> I know it was kind of nice to be running with Butch Green the past couple of weeks. We've been up front and been right there, but just haven't had the car to quite get by him at the end. But it seemed kind of nice to be running up there with Butch. Well, the street stock is a, a tough division here at Thunder Mountain Speedway. Some of the best uh, in the southern tier do battle. What would it mean to take down the honors to win the Harry Yule Memorial here in September? Oh, that would be an honor. It would be nice to get my first win when uh, the Harry Yule race. Well, tell us a little bit of your racing career, where you started, and uh, obviously you're here in the street stocks, and maybe your future plans as uh, you move forward. Uh, I've run uh, four-cylinder super stocks for, uh, must have been four years, I think, and then ended, they ended up getting rid of us and ended up moving up to a street stock, and last year was my rookie year, and this is my second year, having good luck so far. Eventually, I might move up to something different. 
Well, very good. It uh, does take uh, a lot of time and effort to put a race car together, no matter what division you're in. So some of the sponsors that have been helping you out and here in the 2011 season, you want to give them a mention here on the race report. Uh, mainly it's all my pit crew and my family. They, they help me out the most, but I got a few sponsors. Uh, the Napa and Whitney Point, uh, the Kith Cart and Sons Construction, uh, Taylor 03 Construction, uh cummings motor they they definitely give me the power under the hood and of course anybody that's interested in ho helping out the jason bb 21 race team uh, just come on down here and have a ch chat with you and uh, uh you would do uh, any sponsor proud in, in the the job that you do out here at, on the 3 8 clay at uh, thunder mountain tell us a little bit about the number 21 uh have you always run the number 21 and is there any special reason why you picked the number 21 uh, no reason really just uh, my brother-in-law running a 20 so I just picked a 21 when we started racing and been in the 21 ever since well people that go to Vegas they like to play the number 21 because when it pays it pays big maybe tonight will be the night that the number 21 will pay out here in victory lane at Thunder Mountain Speedway it'd be nice to get our first one been looking just not quite had enough yet that's it for now back to you Ron in the studio BB managed another top four finish on Saturday night. At Lebanon Valley Speedway, Neil Stratton scored the $4,000 modified win. Colby Schroeder was the sportsman winner. The pro stock winner was Chad Jessio. And pure stock wins went to Phil Sherman, Dan Speedling, and Phil Wood. Saturday night, Shangri-La 2 began their racing program with the balance of the rain postponed late model feature. Jim Lamoureux crossed the line first but was DQ'd for track width, giving the win to Travis Fisher. On the mics are Tom Cummings and Carol Husak. The battle on for uh, fifth and sixth, but look at the battle for the race lead over there on the back straightaway. Just the same maneuver that he did to get uh, to overtake the Travis Fisher car. And uh, we have a new race leader at lap number 16. It's Jim Lamoureux, 17, excuse me, Lamoureux. So a tough break for Scott and Ermey, two weeks in a row, broken race car here at the Speedway. And whoa, there we've got contact over in turn number four. Joe Burns and Jerry Deneen getting together, coming off of turn number four. Deneen doing a 360, gets it gathered back up. Good start this time by Tim Lamro and Travis Fisher right together. They head down towards turn number one. Fisher stays with Lamro. Fisher on the high side, trying to make the pass on the high side. He's got a nose ahead of Lamro. Down the back stretch they run. Here comes Lamro charging deep into turn number three. Drives it in deep, holds on to the lead coming off of turn number four. Lamro and Fisher pulling away from Jerry Deneen, who's battling with the 53 of Joe Burns. Coming off turn number four. Win number two of the season going to Jim Lamro. Travis Fisher finishing in second. Lee Sharpstein made mincemeat of the competition in both street stock features, at times taunting second place cricket clunch by slowing down, then kicking in the jets. Jimmy Zacharias found it easy pickings, adding another win to his stats. But the whole night was worth it watching a first time winner defending the lead. Tom Cummings and Carol Husak take Joe Brown to his first career win. Two more laps, two more times around the speedway. Meanwhile, Scott Nermy giving a challenge to Jerry Deneen down turn number one. Nermy dirt track and getting into Deneen. Hard contact into the outside wall by both cars, and we're going to have caution. So the 20th, Scott Nermy going for position down into turn number one. He was battling for fourth, got left side tires down on the asphalt, kicked him up the speedway, got into the 11 of Jerry Deneen. Both cars hard into that outside foam, and we have got... Some destroyed foam blocks up there in turn number three. Joe Brown and Joe Burns at the head of the pack coming to life in turn number four. Gary Polk Jr. waves the green flag. We are underway and Joe Burns trying to lift up the back bumper of Joe Brown. Brown pulls away. Burns slips up high in the speedway. Side by side battle for third. Josh Lloyd and Joe Schneider as they go down towards turn number three. Here they come looking for the checker flag. Out of turn number four, his very first Shangri-La 2 motor speedway win goes to Joe Brown. Joe Burns finishing in second, Josh Lloyd finishing in third. Action from the Kenny Moore Classic when the race report returns.
three generations we've been building world-class American performance. Like the new Edelbrock Power Package Top End Kit, based on Edelbrock's powerful RPM crate engines. Each kit includes aluminum heads and intake, cam and lifters, gaskets, and hardware to build your own 400-plus horsepower Chevy small block. For three generations, it's pure American performance from the leader. Call now for your free Edelbrock catalog. Edelbrock makes them right, right here in the USA. I'll make it alert. I'll make it alert. Pick me! Pick me! We don't badmouth the competition. Huh? We just beat them in price, quality, and customer hey. service. Hi, this is Craig Moss with KRM Foundation Repair. Have you got water in the basements, cracked or flaking foundations, foundation walls that are falling in? Call us for a free estimate today. We're KRM Foundation Repair. Good as any, better than some. Bye. Welcome back. On Sunday, Thunder Mountain Speedway honored racing legend Kenny the Flying Milkman Moore with the running of the first annual Kenny Moore Classic. One driver who would like to add that win to his list of accomplishments is Brian White. Jim Chase has more. Well, here we are in the pits at Thunder Mountain Speedway on the Flying Milkman Kenny Moore Classic weekend, and I'm talking with Brian White here, sportsman driver, currently in the third position in the points. And Brian, you've had a pretty successful racing season so far this year. Yeah, we've had uh, we've had some ups and downs, but we've uh, we've got it together a little bit now here, and uh, it was a pretty good weekend. To let us see what we got. Well, Kenny Moore Milk Milkman Kenny Moore Classic coming up here tomorrow, 60 laps, big payday. Going to have some competition here. Uh, we wish you the best of luck. Um, you've doubled your winnings this year compared to last year and uh, it only can get better from this point on. Yeah, we're going to try to start off tonight and see what happens tonight and then go after the big one tomorrow. If we can keep it together tomorrow, we might have a chance of that one too, I'm thinking. so. All right, well, it's going to be a full field of cars and good competition. We've got beautiful weather here and uh, tell us a little bit some of the, about the sponsors that have been helping you put the car together and to run here uh, as successful as you have. I tell you, Garth Fabricating has been with me ever since I've started. He's a sponsor of my dad's race cars, and he's a good friend of the family. And he he does all the body work, and you know, at a price I can't refuse. And uh, that's why he's always on the big pot, spot on the back of the car. And uh, oh, Amy's daycares, my mother, she's always a good help to me. And uh, let's see, Hunt's Auto Service, We Go Bowl, Punk's Place came on with us this year. They're doing pretty well for us. And uh, Finish Line Automotive. Just about uh, we pretty much we call it the community car. We got a lot of people around our community helping us out and it gets help us get where we're at. Well, very good. You've been running in the sportsman division for a number of years. When you first started, where did you start out? I started out at Five Mile Point running the modifieds uh, with a sportsman car just to get some seat time, and uh, well, that's where I got my start. I was watching my dad race for the championship, and so I kept pulling off every time I got the lap flags, trying not to screw that up. But but it's it was a uh, it's been a long time coming. We've had a, you know, gotten better and better as we go on, and uh, hopefully we continue from here. Well, things are looking pretty good for the 2011 season. You were finished in the top five in points last year. Uh, the number 56, has, has that always been with you, or is there a special reason behind the 56 for Brian White? Well, I uh, started off running uh, 20X or in 20 Junior, just about anything 20, and then I uh, wrecked the car up pretty bad one year, and they, they, people were saying, well, why don't you try uh, try getting your own number? So I said, well, I love the number 56. I wore it in football. You know, and uh, my favorite football player is Lawrence Taylor, you know, he wore a 56. I, li I like Pat Ward as a kid, he run the number 56, and uh, so I just went with 56. I didn't see many of them around, so I, uh, I went with it, so. Well, there there's a story on Brian White and the flying 56 on his uh, season here so far in 2011 at Thunder Mountain Speedway. Best of luck to you today, and uh, hopefully uh, tomorrow in the Kenny Moore Classic, uh, you'll be right up there in the contention for the big prize and all the contingent money. We'll have a big field of cars here and the competition will be stiff. Oh yeah, it's definitely going to be stiff. Like I said, we can keep it clean. I think we have something for them. Uh, this place is a hard place to come in here and, and take it from us, you know, so we're looking forward to it. Well, there's a story on flying Brian White from Thunder Mountain Speedway. Back to you, Ron, in the studio. The 600 XL Modifieds were on hand with Joe Finelli taking the win and Butch Green continued his streak in Hurricane Street Stock action, but the main event was for the Sportsman Division, and Brett Welch and Ken Titus made up the front row. Jim Chase calls the action. 
as they take them down into turn three. This is what we've been waiting for all summer long. Door to door, wheel to wheel, bumper to bumper, the Kenny Moore Classic underway. Kenny Moore waving the flag and we're racing at Thunder Mountain. Down into turn one we go and we got Kevin Jordan going around up in turn two and the caution flag will come out immediately as Brett Welch takes him to the stripe. Does Nick Nye have anything left for him? We'll find out here momentarily. Clean and green, white flag now being displayed one more time around. Will lap traffic have anything to do with it? Off turn two they go. Down into turn three and four. Checkered flag is up into the air. Berkshire's Brett Welch will take the win over Nick Nye. Ryan Jordan, Larry Hillis, and Jimmy LaRock rounding out the top five. Over the years, I've seen hundreds of fireworks displays at dozens of racetracks, and without exception, the announcer feels the need to be witty, dramatic, funny, or just generally annoying. So it was a pleasant surprise on Saturday at Shangri-La 2 when they offered up an awesome display of fireworks accompanied by some well-chosen musical selections and not a word from the announcers. So to Amy Stilson, Tom Cummings, and Carol Husak, I say thank you for letting me enjoy the fireworks without commentary and to those of you who weren't there, boy, did you miss a great show. With that said, we leave you with fireworks and music from Shangri-La 2 Motor Speedway. For the entire staff of the Race Report, thanks for watching. Until next week, I'll see you at the races.